Praise God. Amen. I'm going to ask brother and sister Kenzie to step forward, if they wouldn't mind. I want to introduce them. Please come. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Our dear friends have come all the way from Pensacola in Florida to minister to us. Uh, many of you uh, know their name, at least their surname anyway. And uh, you've heard of them, probably uh, uh, watched them, uh, streamed. And uh, so I don't think these, these people already know you, even though you've never been here before. But our sister spent, I think, how many years? Eight years? Eight years in Australia as a young lady. Uh, so she's very acquainted with some people who are already here. So let's welcome them to Australia. Yes. Amen. You stay here, brother. I'm going to hand over to you. Okay. Yeah. Amen. All right. I'm going to hand over to Brother Kenzie. And we're going to pull out all the stops. Are you going to back him? All right. Let's go. <laughs> Would you please stand to your feet and clap your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise and the worship from the depths of your heart. And let there be a shout. Let your voice out. This isn't just applauding a performance. This is lifting up our voice to give glory and honor to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What a delight it is for Lynette and I to be in Australia. We have experienced Sydney. It is a beautiful city, and that's only a fraction of the beauties of Australia that we've had the opportunity to experience. But it's a great privilege to be here. I have already tasted the meat pies, and that is my dish right there. I am officially now Australian. I am a meat pie lover, and especially that they have mushrooms in it. That is really awesome. Now, that is awesome. And did you know that Australia is in the Bible? In the Song of Solomon, it says that I sat down under in his shadow with great delight. <laughs> so we are here, down under, in his shadow with great delight. Now, I believe this with all of my heart. This is not just simply to try to excite you or to hype you up, but there's an anointing on you. There is a powerful anointing in this assembly. And I don't want you to cut it short, and I don't want you to look at it with disdain or to feel like it's not enough to match this generation's problems and circumstances. But I've come to tell you that your anointing is adequate, more than enough to do anything God wants you to do. And I want you to accept that, and I am here. I felt like God put a word in my spirit for Australia, and my church has even joined in. All of our intercessors have picked different times of when the speakers are preaching in their pray. I've got people praying right now while I'm preaching. And then others, as they speak, there will be prayer that will go up. So we're connected in anointing and in the spirit. And I have come to speak a word of restoration and recovery. And I want you to receive that because God's about to increase your anointing and give you a double portion. You came with one anointing, but you're going to walk out of here with a double portion anointing. So I want you to open your heart and receive the word of God in Psalm 74 and verse 9. Brother and Sister Downs, thank you so much for your magnificent hospitality. To the general board, we bless and give honor to all of you. And it's great to have my wife, Lynette, with me. They say I preach much better when she's with me. So you are in for, I hope, a good time in the Lord. Psalm 74, 9 through 12, we see not our signs. That troubles me. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. I believe that God wants to raise up the prophetic because you are one prophetic word away from a victory. 
You are one prophetic word away from a miracle, and you need to open your heart to that. Neither is there any among us that knoweth how long. O God, how long shall the adversary reproach, shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Why withdrawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand, pluck it out of thy bosom? For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. So I just want you to understand something that God is still working salvation in the midst of the earth. He's never been put out by this society's dysfunction. And the fact that they've moved so far away from God and the word of the Lord that there is absolutely no values left or integrity. No matter where you go in the world, there seems to be none. But there's still something in the church that lets me know that God's still showing up with power and he's still doing a mighty work in the midst of the earth and you're a part of it. And I've just come to tell you that if the devil has lied to you and said your anointing is not enough, let me just tell you exactly what the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Your anointing is more than enough. And it shall be done. And this is my text. It's time to recover all. Would you just put your Bibles down, lift your hands and your voice together, and let's bless the Lord with all of our soul, mind, and strength and invite God's anointing into this house to minister to us and to give us the recovery, the restoration, the double portion anointing that he wants to place on us. God, speak your prophetic word. I plead the blood over the minds and the hearts of these precious people who are in the heat of the battle, who have to fight many adversaries. But we do know that the adversary, though he reproaches everything we stand for, and though they blaspheme the name forever, I do believe you are still working salvation in the midst of the earth. And I ask that you would visit with us here tonight and that you would move among us and that whatever we need, you would provide it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's time to recover all. God bless you. You may be seated. God has brought us to this place, and he understood exactly what he was doing when he matched us with this generation. The problems of our society today does not take God by surprise. He understands perfectly what times we live in, and he has matched you with these times. And he knew exactly what he was doing when he has brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. It's not the signs of the times because you can look around and see that we are coming to the close of this dispensation, but really it's time for the signs to be manifest in this place and for the power and the glory of God to be revealed in the earth. The enemy has come to steal and to kill and to destroy, but Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. We're all faced with the enemy who fights us with fervency and he knows exactly the right strategies to use at times. But I just want you to know that he is no match for an anointed Holy Ghost filled child of God who understands who they are in Jesus Christ. I speak restoration and recovery upon you and the devil can't take anything away from you that you do not yield. And so I say, church, let's rise up with a new desire to fight the enemy and say, I hold to my doctrine. I hold to my holiness. I hold to my worship. I hold to my joy. And I'm not going to let it go. Jesus said it was life and that more abundantly, but I have seen in the spirit the great battle that so many of our churches are fighting. We're fighting it in America and you're fighting it here in Australia. And a great multitude of people that are coming from that battle, of people that are weary and wounded and bleeding and suffering, shell-shocked and dismayed. It wasn't paramedics that had come to the field to pick them up, but it was an angelic host that I saw in the spirit and God was leading them to the apostolic church because that's the only refuge where they can be healed. 
And as they neared the place, there was an emblazed, emboldened word that seemed to reflect for everyone to see, and that word was restoration and recovery. The Lord said, I've gathered my soldiers from the battle. Many are wounded and suffering, but I have brought them to this place to recover their anointing and to reclaim what they have lost so that when they go out and fight the enemy again, they will win the victory. I believe that you ought to reclaim what's rightfully yours. The revival that God wants to send this country is rightfully yours. The anointing that's on your life is not just some pie in the sky. It is God's purpose for you to be an anointed vessel that rises up against the forces of evil and say, I still believe that God is able to work. I've come to declare to you that if you need healing in this place, God can heal you. If you need deliverance in this house, God can deliver you. If you need to be lifted up, God can lift you up. I feel healing in this house. I feel recovery in this place. But the enemy wants us to become so blinded by our troubles and our oppositions. And that's really what the battle is. It's in our own minds. Tell somebody this is the battle. Turn to him and tell him this is the battle. Because the enemy knows if you ever see this, if you ever understand that he can't take anything from you, Calvary purchased for you the right to fight. And Calvary purchased for you the power to overcome. And the devil is not in charge of anybody's choices. If the devil couldn't stop the man when there was 2,000 demons inside of one man and couldn't stop him from coming and worshiping Jesus Christ, I've come to tell you there's not enough devils in hell that can stop Australia from experiencing the greatest explosion of revival in its entire history. I've come to declare you haven't seen your greatest revival yet. You haven't seen your greatest day yet. And I want somebody to rise up. I don't care how tired you are. I don't care how beat up you are. You need to rise above the opposition. You need to rise above the woundedness of your spirit. And you need to worship God with all of your soul, mind, and strength. This warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And one of the greatest strongholds of the enemy is that he has blinded people's minds to the power and the ability of what God can do in your situation if he ever manifests his glory. Don't underestimate what God can do in one moment's time. God did not put you on this world to be an experiment. You're not just seeing how much he can put you through to see if you can survive. I believe that God has designed for you to overcome every evil spirit. You weren't just created to have relationship with him. You were created to have dominion and rule in this life. You need to get a revelation of Revelation 5, 9 through 10 when John spoke of watching that scroll being opened which represented the title deed that was lost to the earth. And he said that he heard the angels sing a new song. Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. We are priests in relationship, but we are kings in rulership. And we shall reign right now in the midst of our crisis. The crisis doesn't have power over us. We have power over the crisis. God doesn't have to change your circumstance to get you excited about Jesus. He doesn't have to change your crisis in order to bring glory and honor to his name because your crisis does not define who you are and it does not define who he is. So I say in spite of your adversity, you rise up with faith and say, I'm going to receive my faith from the word of God here tonight. I'm going to be strengthened in my worship. I'm going to be strengthened in my resolve. I come against the enemy in the name of Jesus.
Take your hands off of everyone that's wounded. Take your hands off of everyone's family in the name of Jesus. I liberate your anointing right now in this place. And I say God's going to give it to you. God's going to give it to you. God's going to give it to everyone in this building. Somebody, somebody rise up with some fight in their spirit. Somebody say, devil, you take your hands off our young people. You can't have them. You take your hands off our churches. They don't belong to you. We belong to another world. And we're going to recover all. Calvary is what restored that relationship so that we could have that rulership in our lives. It was through the power of the word. And it was through the power of the blood and the name and the spirit that we have been able to overcome. Because sin is a barrier to God. And our desire to be disobedient when we would do good, evil is present with us. And you know how that goes. Because each of us have to fight that inner struggle and that war within us. I say let's rise up and know that through the blood of Jesus we can overcome that battle. Because the devil is not in charge of my choices. Therefore, I can choose whatever I desire to do. And I choose freedom and liberty and jubilee. I've come to liberate you. And I just hope that you would liberate the ones around you and say, go ahead and have your revival. Go ahead and receive your miracle. Go ahead and receive what God has for you. Because it's time to recover all. Romans 5, 17 says, For if by one man's offense death reign, by one much more they shall receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. He's not talking about the sweet by and by, but he's talking about the terrible now and now. And that's why I feel like destiny is going to be accomplished in this meeting because the sovereignty of God has gathered us here from all across this great nation. And I am here to take back the joy. I am here to take back the health. I am here to take back our families. I'm here to take back revival and take back my faith. Tell somebody I'm going to take it back. Tell somebody around you, I'm going to take it back. That's why we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we pray, thy kingdom come. When we pray, thy will be done on earth. It's already done in heaven. We're just bringing the kingdom of God that's already done in heaven. And we're establishing it right now in our lives through the power of the Holy Ghost. And so I say, why don't we just rise up and say, we are the kingdom of God. We are the kingdom of God in the earth. It's not low here and low there, but the kingdom of God is within you. Do you have the Holy Ghost in fire? Have you spoke with tongues and the spirit of God gives you the utterance? Have you been baptized in Jesus' name? Then I defy any enemy that can take our faith or our joy away from us. I say rise up, church, in the name of Jesus Christ. Man, I feel like running. I don't know what y'all got in the water around here, but just something got me on fire in this house. I'll tell you right now, I come against every spirit in the name of Jesus that's trying to steal the joy of God's people. I know you're fighting a battle. I know you're hurting and wounded, but I say in the name of Jesus, rise up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The kingdom is now. The kingdom's in the house. The kingdom is here because Jesus is here. And wherever Jesus is, he's the king. Then he brings the kingdom with him. It don't make any difference if it's an individual's life, a city, or a church, or a home. Wherever God rules, that's where the kingdom is. The first message that Jesus preached in Mark 1 and 15, he said the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Who was the kingdom? I'll tell you who was the kingdom. His name is Jesus. And wherever he placed his foot, 
That's where the kingdom of God ruled. Demons had to flee. They cried out in torment and said, you're tormenting us before our time. Why? The king done showed up. And when the king shows up, all of the hell begins to shake. And if you've got the Holy Ghost, that's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So I just want to say that again because I felt the devil's kingdom rock just a little bit. So I'm just going to say it one more time. I said that the kingdom of God is within you. And it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I've just come to tell somebody, you've got it, you've got it, you've got it. It's in you now, now. You don't have to get it, you've got it. How many of you are old enough to remember Andre Crouch's song back in the 70s? I've gone in, I've gone in. Just something about the power. Y'all remember that? Does anybody remember that or am I just old? Am I the oldest person here? How many? We got one. Come on, just show your age. It's all right. How many of y'all remember? I've got it. Now, back in the States, we used to sing that song. It was a 7-Eleven song. Seven words, and we sang it 1,100 times a night. So it was a 7-Eleven song. And I never could figure out why in the world did that song, I've Got It, take Pentecost by storm. We've shouted at that song. I mean, if, if nothing was happening in the church service, you start singing, I've got it. Well, I'm going in. Just something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I've got it. Ow! <laughs> and so I asked God, I said, God, how can a simple little old 7-Eleven song take Pentecost by storm. And I honestly believe the Lord answered me and said, for the first time in the lives of Pentecostals, they're actually claiming they got something instead of trying to get something. I just want you to know, Australia, you've already got it. You just need to release it in faith and in joy. You need to get the frown off your face. You need to get the sadness out of your spirit. You need to put the joy of the Holy Ghost. He may not change your circumstance, but you need to go ahead and dance like he's already delivered you and worship like you've already got what he has promised. Because everywhere Jesus went, the kingdom went with him and you need to go with Jesus. You need to go with Jesus. All of us believe we're going to rule when Jesus returns and sets up the, his kingdom. But I'm telling you that he expects and desires for us to rule now in the spirit. And though that is not a complete kingdom until he returns, it is the power of the church to work salvation in the earth. And I believe that God, and I'm just going to speak it, and I want y'all to receive it in faith. God is going to restore the signs and the wonders to the people of his name in this hour in a dimension we have never seen it before. And you know what I say? Start right now, Jesus. Start right now. Start right now. Start right now. See, I love preaching to people like you because y'all are so responsive and you interrupt me while I preach and I really do enjoy that. Thank you for that. Y'all make me feel like I'm right back at home. Thank you. I appreciate that. Y'all have done well. Y'all did what the general superintendent said. Get with the man. Y'all done it. Thank you for that. But the rabbis teach that he who says amen is greater than he who speaks the blessing. Because you have to have an amen connected to the blessing to create the positive and negative poles to create an electrical charge and for Shekinah glory to be revealed. So, Jesus said it like this. And he brought, as a matter of fact, the rabbis taught that many centuries before Jesus came along. Jesus brought it into the New Testament and he said it like this, where two agree touching any one thing, it shall be done. 
So if I speak the blessing, then you need to respond with amen. Because if you don't say amen, you can't complete the circuit and Shekinah can't reveal itself in this house. So when I say God is going to give us revival, then somebody needs to say God's going to restore signs and wonders and miracles to the church in a greater dimension than he ever has before. Did you know that the word amen in one African language is actually three yeses said repeatedly on an ascending scale, musical scale? Yes, yes, yes. Most of the time when you say three yeses, you say it on a descending scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Isn't that the truth? You got, yeah, I've heard that before, preacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you need to change that. When I say God is going to deliver you, you need to say yes, yes, yes. Man, I need to teach y'all how to sing here in Australia. Now, when I went to an African-American church back in 1972 in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and that was frowned upon, but I went to preach in their churches and we had revival in Lake Charles, Louisiana. That was the deep South and you weren't supposed to go to African-American churches, but it didn't make me any difference. I went wherever anybody would open their pulpit and let me preach. I was just a kid preacher and I, I just wanted to, to, to touch the hearts of people. And I just loved the way they responded to me while I preached. And that was a part of the key to why we had revival. They would sing to me while I preached. They would. I would tell them, Jesus is wonderful. They'd say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> See, I know you haven't had revival because I needed to come teach you how to say, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on now, I said, God is in this place. You need to get some, yeah. You need to put some amen in your spirit. You need to connect with me in agreement that we're going to shake the gates of hell in Jesus' name during this meeting. That when you go back, your anointing's going to increase. He must increase and I must decrease. And the Lord is going to be glorified and magnified by the work that is done. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So you got to get a little amen in your spirit. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when one of the mothers of Israel would step out in the aisle and she'd get her handkerchief and she'd flip it out there and say, well, that means you better listen up. He's talking to you. <laughs> and then when they said, help him, Jesus, I knew I wasn't doing very well. Help him, Jesus. But I believe that there is an amen in this service and there's a joy in the hearts of God's people and there is a restoration of the kingdom authority that God is going to give to his people in this hour. I say rise up church, rise up, rise up and believe in the miraculous. Believe that God's going to give it to you now. The kingdom is today and we need to be about the Father's business. We need to start doing what God wants us to do. We need to take authority and dominion in the spirit. We need to rule and bind the enemy. He's dominated things long enough. He's dominated your feelings long enough. He's dominated your attitude long enough. He sent circumstances to you that have discouraged you and dominated your spirit and beat you down. And I've come to fight alongside you. I've come to draw my sword from the sheath. And I've come to strike at the heart of the enemy and empower you and equip you and enable you to release your anointing in this house and say, devil, you have no authority in my life. Have no dominion in my life. God may not change my circumstance, but I'm not going to let it change my faith and my attitude because I'm going to rise up 
I believe that the kingdom has come now. I believe that it's here in my life, in my city, my state, my home, my church. I believe it's in my home. I believe that it gives us power and authority over every evil spirit. He teach, Jesus taught his disciples and sent them out to preach the kingdom of God, to heal the sick. He said, I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The enemy wants you to think you don't have this power. That just little o you. There's no way that you can have this power. But I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. And he is the father of all lies. And he has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I say, we have come to recover all. I want to say that once again because I felt your amen and your connection with that and I felt something shake in the spirit world. I've come to tell you, we've come to recover all. Let me just say it one more time. Third time's a charm. You know what I'm saying? I just said we're going to recover all. Woo! said we're going to recover it from Canberra to Perth all the way up to Adelaide anywhere that you put your foot God's going to give it to you anywhere you take dominion God's going to move the signs are coming back to the tabernacle and God is going to move with power he's going to move I said he's going to move with power when David came home after being rejected by the king of, the, of Philistia. And he came back to his place of abode, Ziklag. He found it burned with fire and, re, and reduced to ashes. And he asked the Lord, Lord, what shall I do? And he called upon the name of God. And he had the ephod. And he sought after God. And the Lord gave him this word. And it is the word for this conference in the Holy Ghost. He said, pursue and thou shalt recover all. And without fail, he even added the without fail, thou shalt recover all. Just want to tell somebody that what you pursue is what you will recover. If you become hungry, desirous to recover what the devil has tried to steal from you, then I believe you can, in this meeting, start a process of restoration and deliverance where God's going to increase your anointing and put a double portion anointing on the Australian church in Jesus' name. And wherever you put your... Wherever you put your foot, God is going to honor it. And he's going to give you power to shake the culture. To shake the culture. I want to say it one more time. Don't be intimidated by the sophistication of this culture. It can fall in one moment's time. As powerful as America has been in the past with its nuclear weapons and its military and this and that and its resources and its manufacturing power. In 9-11, we saw the fragments. We saw it fragment and begin to crumble because terrorists hit the towers. And when they hit those towers, it let us know that God can fulfill the book of Revelation and he can bring Babylon down in one hour. Let me just say that again. God can bring all this culture down. In, that's how quick he can do it. He can do it according to the book of Revelation. One hour. But the church, he said, upon this rock, my, 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 my. Upon this rock, oh, I'm going to say it again. I feel something shaking in the house. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates. I said, and the gates 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you believe that, then you need to stand to your feet and clap your hands and shout. Voice is gone. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. You have dominion. You have the anointing. The signs are returning to the tabernacle. We're going to get a prophetic word in this meeting that's going to send us forth equipped to bring the kingdom of God with us because he lives in us. I don't know what your struggles are specifically, but I feel to give an altar call in this place tonight. And I just want those that have confidence in the Holy Ghost that God's going to empower you tonight. He can heal, he can deliver, and he can free. I don't know if the devil's troubled your home, your church, or your own personal mind, but whatever you're going through, I'm here to fight with you. And I got a church back in Pensacola that's praying right now while I'm preaching. And I don't know what time it is there yesterday, but it's on up in the, in the wee hours of the morning, but they're praying for this, this conference message tonight. And so if you desire this victory, I want you to step out from where you're standing and I want you to walk down those steps. Just be very careful as you walk down those steps. Don't trip. Just walk carefully. If you're in the balcony and if you would make your way around and then down the aisle and just come around the front, there's plenty of room up here. We've got space spanned out on either side that you can come and pray because we're going to take authority in the name of Jesus.